Hey, how's it going, everyone? This is uh, Carpo, and I'm going to bring a little bit of uh, information to the table, and drop some knowledge on you about neurotransmitters, which are no longer neurotransmitters. Uh, well, according to some scientists, that uh, uh, biomediators is the word of the day, and I'm going to use that one from now on instead. Uh, make sure my camera's going here, because it's having some issues lately. Yeah, seems to be going. Um, I have a paper here that I'm going to read, and uh, there's a certain uh, <clears throat> a certain level of understanding somebody has to have in order to talk about brain chemistry and body chemistry. And the more research I've done, the more I feel like I know, and the less I feel like I know. More like the, the less I feel like the entire field knows. But I, I, let me just put it this way: if you were to study brain chemistry and that's all you did. Eventually, you would get to most of it, but uh, as for knowing it all and knowing every study that's going and every single uh, aspect of the study, uh, that's more difficult. It's, uh, it's the point of that was that <coughs> all the sciences, all the different components of biology and understanding humans, uh, nobody can know it all. Nobody can understand it all. Nobody can understand all the different studies that have been done or all the different connections. You know, if you work full-time, you don't have time to study full-time what you do. And uh, it doesn't matter how good of a medical professional you are or even how good of a healer or uh, whatever your practice is, you can only know so much. And, and, and so the, the, the things that I delve into, I think, wow, this goes deep, you know. But... Some people would say, you know, you, you can only, you know, don't get too, you know, too into it, too into the details because it's constantly changing. Because what we learn today is uh, likely to be changed a little bit by what we learn tomorrow. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I wanted to read this paper because I printed it out. It's just some notes that I took. Uh, I can't remember where I got them, but it's about brain chemistry and how we co-evolved with plants and how it's not... Uh, well, I'll just read it. See what you think. So, uh, it says, Are there any neurotransmitters that appeared only in human evolution history? Probably not. The common human, human neurotransmitters we know of are also found in other animals. More surprisingly, most of them are also found in organisms with no nervous system, such as micro, microorganisms and plants. And I knew that about plants, I didn't think about microorganisms, but uh, that's pretty interesting. This has even led some to advocate the change of the name neurotransmitters to biomediators. It is believed that the changes in the nervous system occur at the circuitry level and are not the introduction of new types of neurotransmitters. For example, Venter, 1988, write, <coughs> The presence of hormones, neurotransmitters, their receptors and biosynthetic and degradative enzymes is clearly, clearly not associated, not only associated with the present and the recent past, but with the past several hundred million years. Evidence is mounting which indicates substantial conservation of protein structure and function of these receptors and enzymes over this tremendous period of time. These findings indicate that the evolution and development of the nervous system was not dependent upon the formation of new or better transmitter substances, receptor proteins, transducers, and effector proteins, but involved better utilization of these highly developed elements in creating advanced and refined circuitry. My god, that's a mouthful, and probably an earful. Um, I tried to only get the non-technical stuff, but it, it is technical. But it's kind of interesting. <coughs> Weiner and LaRue, 1996, write, Many features in the mammalian sensory thalamus, such as types of neurons, their connections, or their neurotransmitters, are conserved in evolution. However, it is important to remember that there are changes related to the neurotransmitters and how they are used in the brain. For example, Berkey and Kaseman, 2004, showed that one gene encoding the enzyme glutamate, oops, glutamate dehydroxinate, or 
dehydro dehydrogenase, sorry, which is important in the neurotransmitter glutamate recycling process, has appeared less than 23 million years ago in our evolution. Grail, 2001, show that one type of serotonin receptor has disappeared somewhere in the evolution between rodents and humans. Found that interesting, not sure where that uh, goes, but... The evolutionary perspective on the universal roles of compounds known as, known as neurotransmitters may help in the analysis of interactions between organisms in a particular ecosystem, also known as biosynosis. I like that one. Uh, from microorganisms to plants and animals. This neurotransmitter mediated phenomenon, which is a significant for chemosignaling and cellular endocrinology, is an important consideration in the development of disease as the living environment influences every organism in the biosynosis relationships. Microorganism to microorganism, microorganism to plant, microorganism to animal, plant to animal, plant to plant, and animal to animal. Non-nervous functions of neurotransmitters, rather biomediators on a cellular level, are considered in this review and compared with each other across different kingdoms. Like everything in evolution, neurotransmitters emerged accidentally from something else. That's what it says, but, uh, you know, that's a speculation. Uh, of course, it probably was accidentally one way or another. It's evolution takes whatever path it can, so... Uh, the oldest neurotransmitters are amino acids that predate the existence of the neuroreceptors that listen to them. There's only two pages, don't worry. The most common neurotransmitters, and also the oldest ones, are glutamate for, ex for, excitator for excitator excit excitatory signaling, nearly 80% of all brain synapses, and GABA, or gamma amino butyric acid for inhibitory signaling. I'm not getting it. Inhibitor in inhibitory signaling, nearly 20% of all brain synapses. These are both amino acids that predate neurons. Amino acids are the same building blocks that make up proteins, which in turn, all of the chemical mechanics of biological cells. And I said proteins on purpose. I'm so, I swear that I, I heard some dudes pronouncing it that way. And I, when he said proteins, I thought, that's so awesome. I'm totally going to start calling them proteins instead of protein. Because it's like, well, eh, whatever. It was just, yeah, it's stuck. It works. <laughs> Glutamate has been around forever as a core metabolic constituent of all cells. GABA goes back as far as plants. And the GABA receptor is found in primitive sea animals without brains, such as jellyfish and even corals. Most likely, glutamate and GABA were around in cells as side effects of other processes. Other molecules showed up that reacted to their presence, future neuroreceptors, and a signaling mechanism was born. Serotonin derives from tryptophan, and another basic amino acid in proteins. It's called serotonin because it was originally found in blood, serum, and influenced blood pressure via vascular tone. Serum plus tone equals serotonin. I didn't know that. I didn't pick that up the first time I was going through these. So I don't usually read, proofread these things, I, you know, I, I sometimes, but interesting. So it says, it was originally found in blood serum and influenced by blood pressure via vascular tone. So serum plus tone equals serotonin. Okay, it was only later found to be a minor but now famous neurotransmitter in the brain. Dopamine, adrenaline, epinephrine, and noradrenaline, norepinephrine, all derived from tyrosine, another basic amino acid that is, that is in all biological cells and has been around forever. These future neurotransmitters were probably around as chemical byproducts, and something reacted to them to become a useful mechanism. Eventually, evolution refined this into a specializing signaling mechanism, which then became concentrated in specialized signaling cells that we have called neurons. While dopamine is present in almost all animals, dopamine receptors seem to have existed only since vertebrates. This diagram, blah, 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 here's a diagram. The short 
in, the story in short is that molecules emerged accidentally and then came to have some signaling value. That led to the evolution of specialized signal detectors, receptors, which then led to the evolution of specialized signaling cells we call neurons. Now we talk about neurons, neurotransmitters, and neuroreceptors, but these are just refined specializations of accidentally occurring biochemical mechanisms. So, <clears throat> it's a bunch of science shit. I know. But uh, that's the kind of stuff I, you know, I like to read. I, I read a lot of the uh, recent studies that... It's cold out today. A lot of the recent studies that happen, um, you know, in science in general, and especially with the brain and neurochemistry. I mean, I have a biology book and, you know, my own biology textbook and microbiology, and I've read somewhat some of it, but I've read, you know, read a lot of articles and uh, watched a million documentaries and videos and, and speeches, especially speakers, you know. It's really interesting to watch boring speakers sometimes. You can learn a lot, but... Um, it fascinates me because I'm into herbs, and because as an herbalist, I want to be able to <laughs> know what I'm talking about. I don't want to be the guy that's like, oh, I sell them, but I don't use them. I don't know anything about them. Uh, and I've always been fascinated by things that I'm into. Uh, so I want to learn as much as possible. When I was, I mean, I'm a carpenter, and when I was building a stairs, you know, I just went out and read all the literature. And when I was, you know, doing cabinets, I'd just read a ton of literature. And it's amazing how many people just don't know how to do things, and they can't read. And they can read, but they just aren't the type of learner that can do that, you know. Learn about something and actually put it to action. But that's different, of course, because that's uh, applying it to a physical structure as opposed to uh, learning about the brain, which I can't get the uh, equipment or, you know, know how to do any scientific brain studies here. But... I have wanted to do some, like, one-on-one -on -one or, like, group sessions where you try to, like, uh, you know, set up something to do something. Try to, you know, how they have psychic, try to do psychic meetings or, like, read each other's mind kind of thing. Uh, <clears throat> we're starting to learn that the brain does put off certain signals and uh, when we are thinking about certain things. And uh, that's a whole, other a whole other story, so... Brains are fascinating, and uh, so if you enjoyed that, then cool. If you didn't, then sorry. <laughs> Talk to y'all later. Have a wonderful day, week, month, year, whatever it might be. Peace.